Hey, what's up guys? This is Vex. And today we're talking about the anime solo leveling. I had no idea what this anime was about going in. I was completely fresh, completely clean. I haven't seen any trailers. I haven't seen anyone talking about this anime. I came in knowing nothing about the adaption. I had no clue what this thing was about. The way I found out about this anime, I was scrolling through YouTube and I saw a title of a YouTube video say, brand new anime, the next big thing. I said, okay, I guess I know what I'm watching now. So that's how I found solo leveling. I'm going to be reviewing episode one. I'll give you my thoughts and I'll tell you at the end if I'll keep watching. Fine, I'll tell you now. I probably will. What is this anime even about? What's the setup here? Well, more than a decade ago, portals that could connect to a different dimension called gates suddenly appeared. Various monsters and magic beasts reside within the gates. Ooh, conventional weapons don't work on these monsters, so you can't just pick up a gun and start firing. You'll probably end up dead. Only those with awakened special abilities are able to fight them. These folks are called hunters. Based on their magical powers, hunters are ranked, S being the strongest and E being the weakest. Yes, I love it. I love a ranking system in anime. Tell me who's strong, tell me who's weak, I love it. However, once awakened, no matter how hard you try, their abilities will no longer be developed, which is an interesting nugget. So from the moment your powers are awakened, that's it. They can't be strengthened. You can't develop it. You can't improve on your abilities. That's it. You're as strong as you're ever going to be, which is unfortunate for our protagonist, who's considered the weakest hunter alive, but we'll get to him later. So what do we have here? We have hunters, we have magic, we have healers, we have guilds and raids, we have healers. It's clear to me that this anime is very much influenced by games. We have supernatural warriors that kill interdimensional monsters. And when you kill the monster, you can retrieve an item from their carcass, which you can then use to make stronger weapons. There's boss level creatures to kill. I mean, this is your favorite RPG. It's your favorite game. Being a hunter is a very dangerous occupation. Hunters get killed. If you're a hunter and you roll up on the wrong monster that you're not capable of defeating, there's a good chance you're gonna die if there's no healer around, which I love. I love that the monsters are actually dangerous. People get killed. It's graphic, it's dangerous, good, I love that. If you know me and I'm watching a show, it's important for the world to feel alive. Every character should feel like the main character of their own story. The world should not feel like it revolves around the protagonist. I'm happy to say, after watching episode one, the world very much feels alive. Every character feels independent, except for maybe the um um the protagonist's friend who really cares about the protagonist. Um, But it's early, there's time to showcase her we can find out what she's all about later on being a hunter is a very casual and mundane life it must have been a long 10 years everyone's kind of casual and relaxed about these damn portals i can't imagine if interdimensional portals were to pop up right now in the real world i kind of believe 10 years from now i would still be freaking out but not these folks being a hunter is very much mundane the vibe i'm getting from these hunters are like they're construction workers gathering up before they head into the construction site i wouldn't work as a hunter okay because i don't want to die but hey you do you boo boo okay you make your living how you gotta make it it appears these hunters are assigned to these missions based on their ranking so the more difficult the mission the higher ranked hunter gets called up so these portals give the hunters access to these dungeons and these dungeons have creatures or monsters that need to be cleared out. Once they kill the monsters, they can collect the magic gems from these monsters and crystals from the dungeon. So you have these hunter associations that hire these hunters to go into these dungeons. The portals give them access to these dungeons. Within these dungeons are these monsters that they can kill. And if you kill them, you get these magical gems. And they can also collect these crystals within the dungeon that can then be sold to the governments. So these associations hire the hunters. The hunters go into the dungeon, kill the monsters, get the loot, get all the valuables out of the dungeon, and then they give it back to the association and they then sell it to the government. And then the association can then pay the hunters. Okay. That's kind of how the system works. And the reason why the government wants the gems and the crystals from the dungeons is they believe they can use that as a green energy. They think they can use it to produce energy. It can replace nuclear energy. It can replace coal and be the ultimate green source of energy. That's what they want to use it for as an energy source. So that's kind of the system we have working here. So now let's talk about our protagonist 
in the present day. He is considered the weakest hunter alive. I mean, this guy can't even handle E dungeons. He almost starved to death and got lost in a maze in a dungeon one time. So this guy is the weakest of the week. He knows he's weak. The reason why he's a hunter is because he needs money. He has a mother in the hospital. His father is nowhere to be found. His sister's in college. He needs funds. He needs money. So he's a hunter because it's a way to make a living. He's working to support his family. There's definitely a focus on the economic status of our hunters. A lot of these people, they need the money. It's not about glory, it's not about saving the world. They need money and they're doing this to feed their families and to make a honest living. So in episode one, our protagonist and a group of hunters head into a dungeon and right away, he almost gets killed. If it wasn't for his healer friend, he would be screwed. After clearing the dungeon, they find that there's not many valuables in there, not that much crystals, not that many gems for them to then give to the association. So they kind of did all this for nothing. There wasn't that many valuables in the dungeon, but as luck would have it, they find another tunnel. Now this is interesting because it's not very common. It's like a dungeon that leads to another dungeon or what they call a double dungeon. Usually when you kill the boss, the dungeon closes, but this time it didn't. So that was a bit of an indicator that something else was going on here. So like a bunch of dumbasses, they decided to vote on if they should continue down this mysterious path. Our protagonist gets the last vote and he says, okay, let's go. So they all head down the mysterious path and everything worked out great. They find more valuables, more gems, more crystals, and they gather it up and nothing bad happens, right? No, of course not. That would be boring. They find this big mysterious door that screams danger, danger. But of course they push forward and they end up being trapped in this boss level looking area where these statues start coming to life and started killing the hunters. It's great. Every single one of them should be terrified and they are. So I appreciate that. I like that very much. And the episode ends with our hunters in a predicament. They don't believe that they're going to make it out alive. So what are my overall thoughts? Honestly, I think this was a strong start. I like the ending. I very much want to see the next episode. So good job there. The animation is beautiful. It's of high quality. Colors are great. It's vibrant. Um, I like the characters for the most part. The healer, I don't know what her name is. I'm not so sure how I feel about her. She doesn't necessarily feel like her own character yet. It kind of seems like she just really cares about the main character and is there for him almost. That, that's the vibe I get. And that's kind of why she's there to save him. She doesn't necessarily feel like her own character yet but it's early we'll see where it goes i'm not writing her off yet she's fine but i like the story i like the direction it's pretty simple straightforward which is fine for the first episode i like how the world is set up not too complicated and i'm looking forward to seeing the next episode we were introduced to other s ranked hunters we know nothing about them yet i'm sure we'll find out more about them later so i'm excited about that yeah overall a good setup a good starting point i have no major complaints i think it's good the show looks good the animation is nice the story is simple and good two thumbs up I want to see the next episode. Have you seen solo leveling? Have you seen the adaption? Are you into this anime? What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments below. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will talk to you later.